Look up any list of best places to live in the U.S., and you're going to find Colorado near the top. Yep, we've got it all here, including a really active political scene. Colorado used to be a red state, heavily Republican. But over the past decade, we've become more independent, which kind of makes us, yeah, purple. And in that way, we're kind of like the United States as a whole. Which is great, in theory, because to solve the biggest problems we face as a country, healthy debate between people with a wide range of perspectives is really important. But a lot of us live in our own bubbles, consuming information that reinforces what we already believe, while demonizing people who don't agree with us. It can make the future seem kind of dark. But it doesn't have to be this way. Our differences don't have to divide us. For example, U.S. Supreme Court Justices Antonin Scalia and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. They could not have been more politically opposite, but they were really close friends. They had healthy debates together. Looks like they rode an elephant together. So we got to thinking, what if more of us were able to pop our bubbles? Not change what we believe, but change how we interact with each other. Not compromise on what matters to us, but be willing to really listen to other perspectives. We paired up four Coloradans to help us test our theory that people with really different points of view and experiences can agree on big goals for our state and country. That more unites us than divides us. Meet Ryan, age 31. I'm Ryan Saunders. I live in Denver, Colorado. I work in private equity. This on the corner up here was where I grew up, this house. We have a long history here. My great great-grandparents came from Ireland right to Denver, and they just never, the whole family never really left. Ryan will be paired with Marcus, age 52, who also lives in Denver. <laughs> the icebreaker question this week is, do you like disco or country music? My name is Marcus Weaver, and I'm the deputy director of the Community Outreach Center. I like country. You like country? No, <laughs> you want to see the playlist? No, I really don't. <laughs> Music is so important to me. I love everything from classical, opera, to jazz, to EDM, to like dubstep, heavy metal, rock, alternative, I mean, you name it. Like, the only thing I don't like is country music. I like country music. Country music? Yeah, because it tells a story. All right. I love country music. All right. I like, I like disco. I grew up in the 70s, so. I was a big Dinah Ross fan. In high school, I was one of maybe three or four Republicans in, in the entire school. My car was keyed when I had like a parking pass from a McCain rally that I had gone to. You know, my family is Democrat, strong Democrat. Hey. Hey. How are you? Good, how's it going? <laughs> you know, it's going. Our other two Coloradans live in very different regions from one another. Suzanne, 36, lives in Boulder County. My name's Suzanne Spiegel. I'm an acupuncturist and I live in Lafayette, Colorado. I moved to Boulder, Colorado in 2004 for undergrad. I ended up just staying. I got really into the anti-fracking movement. This is just yeah. the beginning. There are days when these issues are too overwhelming for me to do anything about, and I think that's why I wanted to do something like acupuncture, because it was like a place that I could make real change on a little level. Suzanne will be paired with Wendy, who is 53 and lives in Lamar, in the southeast corner of the state. I'm Wendy Buxton Andrade. I live in Lamar, Colorado. Born and raised here, you know, it's just like any other small town. Everybody knows your business before you know it half the time. I'm in my third term as Towers County Commissioner, so 10 years now. I was the first female county commissioner. I like the ideologies of the Republican. 
um, and so I vote Republican. In every election, I voted Democrat. Before they met one another, we asked each of our Coloradans how they would rate our current state of democracy on a scale from one to 10. I'd say probably five. Two, <laughs> like a two maybe. Oh, it's like dangerously close to one for me right now. We're just at this weird state. So you're saying one to 10, we're, we're like this. We're like a wave on the ocean. During their one hour call, each pair will answer 12 survey questions about issues facing Americans. They'll answer the questions individually, but they'll discuss their answers and their different perspectives together. To start, they're asked to introduce themselves and to read a couple icebreaker questions out loud. So let's start with an intro. Please share with each other your first name, okay. where you are now, what type. Okay, so. Um, yeah, you can go first. I, I'll go first. My first name's Wendy. Well, my first name's Marcus. You know, I work at an uh, outreach center in Denver, Colorado. We work with homeless folks. Has politics affected your relationship with family, friends, or coworkers? If yes, how? I'd say politics has definitely affected mine, but that's because I'm an elected official. Like my closer friends and my family, I feel like are pretty much more on the progressive liberal side. I don't feel like it's affected my relationships that much because I haven't had to deal with like conflicting beliefs. My whole family, they're all very, very, very liberal. You know, they really wanted me to understand politics and, and get involved from a very early age. I realized I was much more kind of conservative in terms of like my fiscal policy and the way that I, I saw things. Um, and that caused a lot of issues with my family. For each of the 12 survey questions, the pairs discuss whether they agree or disagree with an objective on a particular topic. All right, let's see, let's begin. For Coloradans who live and work in our communities, housing should be available and affordable. All right, now, I wanna hear what you gotta say first because you know I'm gonna have a lot to say about this. Oof. If you're a true Republican, I know you got a lot to say about this. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So I do think, um, I don't know, I don't even know how to begin with this. I, I know you don't. So I much to say know. and so little to say at the same time. We should do more to conserve our public land, water, wildlife, and to prevent disasters like wildfires. The environmental challenge that has impacted like the front range, I feel like the most um, is the the way that fracking has affected our air quality um, and I would say also the smoke from the wildfires too. I do believe in not having to depend on you know foreign countries for oil and gas because I think that could be a disaster. Yeah I mean I definitely think that we should um, also depend on ourselves for energy and that's why I, I feel like renewables are such a good option for Colorado. We have a lot of wind towers out around here as we have more and more wind towers, we're disrupting the natural habitat. You know what? I read all that stuff. I seen that movie that Al Gore put out, all that stuff. And it's just like, how much has really changed? I don't really know much about it. So I try not to be an expert. Yeah, I, I think um, climate change is, is happening. I don't think that there's any reason that we lose jobs. It's a transition. When there is evidence that a person could harm themselves or others, they should not have access to firearms, including their own. I mean, even with a car, like you have to take a test to get a car. And if you drink while you're driving, you get your license taken away. And if you have a history of things that like, you know, make you not eligible to have a car, like not being able to get your paperwork in um, for your license, you don't get a car. Mental health wise, we need more stuff around mental health. Um, we blame the gun, but we don't blame the person. I think that we need to get away from blaming the item that is used and start helping the person. The, the problem that I have, and this is like, I guess the core of my politics is, is, is entitlement, mm -hmm. right? Like, I absolutely think that if you are working hard and you've 
had you know no one's life is perfect people go through tough times people are born into tough times and i got you get you to know, it i so got what you I'm, what i'm trying to say is yeah. i fully support affordable housing as long as you are earning it in some way and it's not just making a, the right amount of money but it's it's doing something to better the community it's doing something to show that you're not just taking and instead of giving back is that good i think so well, that's good on that one <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah, let's listen. <laughs> Sometimes agreeing to disagree is the right path forward. In high school, I studied the Constitution. And when I think about what the founders intended for that, what they would see today, I think they would be horrified. If you only have people who agree, you don't really get anywhere, do you? You know, you go until you, you fall off the cliff. You need someone who's saying, hey, there's a cliff coming up. But respect in that disagreement is what matters. And that's what I don't see happening today is respect. As much as I think we are far apart in so many ways, we're just that close too. Sometimes I think that we go politically correct too much and when you go politically correct too much, you forget about history. If we have to tiptoe so much around having conversations, it's hard to have a real conversation, and then it's hard to like build any intimacy and make any progress. Okay, so should we continue? Yeah. Parents should have more control over what their children learn and do not learn in school. I agree. I mean, that's... I strongly agree with that. I mean, you should be able to decide what your kids learn and stuff. Um, so. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I guess like, what if the parents don't believe that the Holocaust happened? Or what if, you know, like then, then they don't want their kids to know that happened. That's real tricky. They, I mean, if you're in question of what your kids are learning in the schools, go and ask. Uh, pay attention to what your kids are learning. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I've got like I've got kids yeah. that I've got, and I'm not worried about. You know, I think history should be taught. Some yeah. of it's bad, some of it's good, some of it's. But hey, um, we learn from history, and we don't want it to repeat itself. So totally. I think, well, that's I think I history think needs that. to be taught, and it needs to be taught factual. So do I. It's interesting. Our four Coloradans find plenty they disagree on. But when it comes to what they want for Colorado, even though they don't agree on specific policies, they agree on the big goals. All right, question seven. When there is evidence that a person could harm themselves or others, they should not have access to firearms, including their own. I've learned a lot. I was in the Aurora shooting and I got shot in my arm. Oh, and uh, you know, I had to go through a lot of mental health stuff through that. And yeah. it's still, it's 10 years this year. And when they come and talk to me about it, they go, well, how are you doing? And I go, you know what? I'm doing pretty good because I had to realize after that, that like I had to move from the person who I used to be into this new person. And it was difficult <laughs> because I wanted to be the old person, but you can't be that person after something like that. I think people have a right to own a gun. Yes. I think, I think you have a right to keep a gun under your pillow or in your nightstand or whatever, if it helps you sleep at night. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you, does it need to leave your home? And your property? No. You know, we got thoughts and prayers for the, you know, the victims of the school shooting and all these things going on. But it's like we need policy and change. You know what I mean? Sandy Hook was what, 10 years ago? It was right after the Aurora shooting. Just when I was getting over the Aurora stuff, that happened. Which and really what the hell, is what the hell has changed? You know what changed? We're now Dude. forcing our children, well, your children, I don't have any children, yeah. but we're forcing our children to learn how to duck and cover, how to barricade themselves, how to run and hide. I believe in Second Amendment, right? I do worry about the red flag because I think that there is people that are going to um, misuse it. You could protect the Second Amendment, right? And people still could have guns, but like it doesn't seem like they need to have like semi-automatic weapons or machine guns. I agree with you. I don't think that they need them. Go out and have fun at your gun range. But who, who goes? You know, and the rent gun? them right there or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. Honestly, no matter what, it's going to be politicized because, oh, my God, you're grabbing our guns. 
yeah it I, yeah i agree i think it you is. need to work behind the deal um if you're making military grade you can't sell them on the streets 100 percent. totally agree all right so go ahead and read it we should make sure that all coloradans have access to high quality affordable mental health care if they need it or want it i strongly agree about that in my I line of work i see a lot of folks who need that i help. think i think if mental health was addressed before everything else i think a lot of issues that we see would be resolved much oh, earlier big time i strongly agree strongly um, agree. that's why i kind of got into accu detox because it broke down some of the mental health barriers awesome. i do it for fun just to bring awareness so it's not like this scary thing for anybody here but she's got the camera on me cool yeah that's cool i'm actually an acupuncturist so that's oh funny. yeah <laughs> we have that in common yeah yeah right up my line i love all that natural stuff cool the longer they talk and get to know each other they seem to let their guards down a little and to be more interested in one another's point of view and experience Okay, affordable housing. We're bros now. You don't gotta, you know, you don't gotta. I don't have to sugarcoat it. No, I, I think that like what you're talking about is people in subsidized housing, like who like have a disability or they have a mental illness and are been chronically homeless and they put in housing. I work with those folks every day. How do you, you know, entice or convince or help what people. you do is i'm gonna tell you how you do it please please tell <laughs> me please tell me you got to continue to set the table as a social worker a resource provider every time they see you you continue just to work with them because people yep. do want to succeed we do have people who get out of prison and jail i help them get a job teach them how to interview they get a good job paying 20 bucks an hour and so i i think that's where affordable housing works yeah we should ensure that police officers are supported and trained to keep our neighborhoods safe, but have other trained professionals respond to situations like nonviolent violent and health crisis. Yeah, I, I, I strongly agree on this one. <laughs> I do too. Yep. Okay, so that one I strongly agree with. Me too. People are at the top. Society's at the top. Everyone else, politicians, police officers, everyone else. It's not, it's not like that. It's See, not, but it should be. I don't know, Ryan. Sounds like you're thinking liberal to me, bro. Sounds like you're thinking liberal. See, <laughs> policy is politics. People yes. are people, right? Yes. yes, yes. Okay, we should invest resources so those who are released from prison leave with tools and opportunities they need to become productive members of communities. Strongly agree. Me too. Uh, I strongly agree about that. Same. So the two parties I don't think are that far apart. <laughs> we just need to get them back to the middle. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, it's gotta be all our voices. It can't be one or two. Exactly, at the end of the day, we're one society. I know. You know, we're all Americans. I don't care what you look like. I don't care who you sleep with. I don't care who you pray to or who you don't pray to. You know, yes, or what you do with your body. What's exactly, the or what, exactly. It's like we're all in different. one society and that's what is supposed to be amazing about this country is you should be able to walk down the street <laughs> as you 100 percent you and and have the freedom to do that you know one of these days i'm gonna look you up so you can do acupuncture on me absolutely <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll track you down and maybe you can yeah. help me find good causes to get involved in and really thank well, you right. nice to meet you wendy have a good day nice to meet you too bye-bye bye all right bye, all right. bye. <laughs> So, once they were alone, what did they think? We asked them to say a few words about their conversation. The music, the notes that we were creating from some of the topics we were talking about just made it feel like it was a symphony because it was awesome. Um, we just kept flowing. I am so glad that I did this. I connected with someone who lives not so far away from me, but we have very, very different lives. I think that every person that's in office should actually have to take this challenge. There was no intention of fighting or trying to push each other toward each other's sides, and it feels like that might be the first step, is just being able to talk and show respect and find some common ground. I don't know how you gotta hold a country. I just encourage people to continue to move forward and lean in because these things matter. And if we could take it here, then we can take it other places and then we can change people, period. Our theory was, even if they disagree on how we get there, 
Most people agree on big goals for our country. For Marcus, Wendy, Suzanne, and Ryan, that seems to be true. And hundreds more Coloradans have now taken on the same challenge. Whether they tend to vote Democrat, Republican, or otherwise, they mostly agree on our big goals, from climate and affordable housing to mental health care and police reform. More unites us than divides us. And the way forward, the way to end the division that sometimes seems like it's tearing us apart, it might not be that difficult. It might be as easy as taking a few minutes to just listen to each other, to step out of our bubbles and have a conversation with a stranger.